Hey, what is going on, everybody? It is your boy Hobo back again with more predictions. This time we are in week number 16. Yeah, um, we are at the end of the regular season pretty much. We've got one more week left, and then it is the glorious wasteland known as playoff football. And pretty much every team in the league has been eliminated at this point, other than, yeah, I think there's only two teams that have playoff eligibility. That are or three, I think, that are outside of the bubble right now. And I think that would be the Cleveland Browns, the Oakland Raiders, uh, the Tennessee Titans. Oh, and um, the Philadelphia Eagles, just due to how bad the NFC East is. So there you have it. We're getting close to our rope here. Everyone else is pretty much locked into where they're going to be. Obviously, the top of the AFC can be shaken up with the game that you're watching right here could really help to uh, to to shake things up there at the top but let's get things started we have a triple header on Saturday and it starts at 1 p.m. sadly I won't be able to watch any of these games uh, I'll be with my family in New York City enjoying the wondrous sights and sounds but it will be the Houston Texans visiting the Tampa Bay Buccaneers so Jameis Winston is a record setter he is the league leader in interceptions he is the league leader in touchdown passes perfectly balanced as all things should be but he is now the Bucks all-time leading touchdown thrower like ever <laughs> and and I mean the Texans their defense is bad statistically the New York Giants defense is better and that is a fact I think the Texans are ranked oh boy 28 and the Giants are 25 so the Texans have a lot of issues defensively that they need to figure out and it's been exploited by teams really that they shouldn't have been beaten by like uh, Denver they should not have lost to Denver that should have been an easy game for them and they got punked in Houston it was a bad ugly loss for the Texans and it's just another reason why I don't think they have deep playoff aspirations but um, I do think they're gonna get the win on Sunday because just in the shootout between Jameis and, and uh, Deshaun I have to take the the quarterback that's gonna make the least amount of mistakes and Deshaun Watson the greatest college football quarterback of all time especially of this decade at least and uh, one of the best young quarterbacks in the NFL today is not going to make that big mistake in a clutch moment the way that Jameis Winston is prone to do but Jameis never really has to enter clutch moments because his team is seven and seven but uh, I'm gonna pick the Texans here to pick up the big win next it will be 4 30 p.m on the glorious glorious Saturday of football and it will be the Buffalo Bills versus the New England Patriots the game you're watching right now and I'm sorry the, the uniforms aren't correct Madden just automatically put New England in their throwbacks so uh, thanks I guess but uh, whatever I digress the Buffalo Bills have been playing really good. Their offense has gotten so much better since the last time these two teams played. And um, the Buffalo defense looks about the same. But they haven't been bit by the injury bug. You know, they are relatively healthy for this late in the season. And that means a lot of good things for them in the postseason. In New England, on the other hand, I mean, just, just look at who they have to throw to. Outside of Julian Edelman... I mean, they need big returns from Nikhil Harry. They need big returns you know, from, I don't even, uh, Philip Dorsett, I believe, is their three. I could be wrong. I don't really know. Uh, so forgive me for that. But and, and they have zero tight end play whatsoever. It's just, it's tough for them right now. And as you saw right there, they're struggling in the, in the kicking game as well. Without Steven Goskowski, they're having to rely on these other kickers who aren't New England kickers and you just you gotta you gotta have that in the back of your mind 
that in a big moment, in a playoff type atmosphere, if this game ends up being 14-14 in the fourth quarter and you send whoever uh, New England's kicker is right now out there to make that kick, there's a great chance he can miss because he's not Steven Goskowski. He's not Adam Venetieri, at least the Patriots version of Adam Venetieri. But Buffalo right now is the more complete team. I think New England's defense is still highly, highly overrated. I mean, they're 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 a good unit. Let's no bones about it. But uh, they're just not <laughs> this sort of all-time great '85 Bears, '86 Giants level of defense. And I mean, Stephon Gilmore's having a great season for himself. But you could say the same thing about Janoris Jenkins. I mean, dude, dude locked down one side of the field. Nobody ever threw to him. So, and, and people are foolish enough to pick on Stephon Gilmore. And, and, and I don't get it. If Gilmore is this great corner, then they wouldn't throw his way, right? But since they continue to throw his way, but he's making them pay for it, does that necessarily mean he's a great corner if they don't care about the, the risk-reward? I don't know. But I'm actually going to pick the Bills in an upset. And I know it's a foolish thing to do. Because it's the Bills and the Patriots, and you just know how these games go. The Bills <laughs> do not beat the Patriots very often in, in this modern era. But I like Josh Allen. I like what they're doing offensively. I like Devin Singletary. And um, I'm blanking on their receivers right now. But I'm sure they've got some <laughs> some great guys out there. You know, forgive me. It's... it's um, th There's thousands of players in the NFL... And it's just hard hard to remember all of them, you know, when you don't have them all written out in front of you. But I'm going to pick Buffalo in an upset. And I know, oh, off the crossbar there. So, see, kicking woes again. This would be a one-point game if Nick Folk could have made those two kicks. And, and it's, it's evident in Madden. It's probably going to be evident in real life because uh, Madden's super realistic, as we know. Then 8-15 on Saturday, the Los Angeles Rams will visit not candlestick park to take on the san francisco 49ers so this game is going to be pretty fun because the rams for better or worse i know a lot of people including myself dogged on them early in the season for how bad they were playing on both sides of the ball but nobody can deny how they've surged back in the second half of the season they absolutely destroyed Seattle on Sunday night a few weeks ago and they just look so much better than the team we've seen over the past number of months and that bodes very ill I would say for uh, for San Francisco because they lost to Seattle and Seattle got scraped by the Rams and the 49ers now have to face this team coming off a loss to one of the worst teams in the league in the bottom feeders of the NFC South. The Falcons beat them on the last play of the game in San Francisco. That is a soul-crushing defeat to have to take when you're the number one seed 49ers. And you know if you lose this game, you're dropping down to the five seed. They lost. And now they're going to be going to Dallas on wildcard weekend if it all ended today. And yes, there still is a chance for them to get back to the number one seed. And it involves them winning. And it involves Seattle losing one more time. And correct me if I'm wrong, they play next week. So that would be for the division lead if both teams win this week. And it would be for the division lead and the number one seed. So just a lot riding on the NFC West. I mean, there is just a lot to look forward to in that division for Seattle, for uh, San Francisco, and even for LA. I mean, the Rams aren't out of it yet. That division is poised, and they very well can send uh, three teams to the playoffs. It, it's plausible, but it involves LA winning out. And in order for San Francisco to get the one seed, they have to beat LA. So you see how interesting this scenario is. And I just don't think the Rams are going to have what it takes 
you know, I saw a lot of bad things from San Francisco on Sunday, and they did not look good for a majority of that game. But they have played phenomenal football for 15 weeks. You know, they went into the Superdome and they beat New Orleans in a shootout. They can win defensive battles. They came so utterly close to taking down Baltimore. I mean, they can go toe to toe with these juggernaut teams. And I just, I like them. I like them a lot. And Jared Goff, prone to the turnover. He is very prone to the turnover. All you got to do, you know, it's, it's a very simple game plan if you are San Francisco you know you you blanket the receivers on the outside you keep everything in front of you you don't give up deep passes and you just force Jared Goff to beat you and I know a lot of teams like to say we'll make so and so beat us but Jared Goff really is that kind of guy where you're gonna have to force him to beat you and sure I know he threw for a bajillion yards against the Arizona Cardinals but that doesn't necessarily mean he's going to be able to take on one of the best defenses in all of football and beat them. So, I like San Francisco in this game, but I'm not necessarily writing uh, L.A. out of the playoffs or even, or even excuse me, from this game. But I just like San Francisco more. They're the safer pick, and they're who I'm taking. And then on Sunday, uh, we've got the... Cincinnati Bengals versus the Miami Dolphins. Only 4% of the entire country is going to see this game. That is a real metric. Only 4% of the United States of America will be able to watch the Cincinnati Bengals take on the Miami Dolphins. Both teams coming off a loss. The Bengals got the brakes beat off of them by New England. And the Dolphins got the brakes beat off of them by the New York Giants, thank God. Um, so it's really, it's just a, a tank bowl, I guess. I don't know how to even qualify a matchup of this suckitude. It's one in 13 versus three in 11. Like these two teams suck. It's just, that's crazy sauce to me. And sure, I mean, I think even though Miami has three wins, I think Cincinnati has looked better. But I think uh, the Bengals are so hell-bent on picking Joe Burrow in April or, or whatever, whenever the draft is that they just are relentlessly losing. And I don't ever want to say a professional sports team is losing on purpose, but they want Joe Burrow, and they're going to get Joe Burrow. And in order for them to get Joe Burrow, they have to lose to Miami on Sunday. And uh, that's what's going to happen in my estimation. I like the I like the Dolphins, but I expect a very bad game from both sides because both these teams want to lose. Because if you're Miami and you force Cincinnati to win, then all of a sudden it's easier now for Cincinnati to accidentally themselves into a win next week and then screw up the entire dichotomy of the first four picks in the draft but that's highly unlikely and I'm gonna take Miami to beat Cincinnati then we have the Steelers and the Jets uh, the Jets are just a bad group we've seen that through 16 weeks so far they have no consistency or rhythm on offense their defense is just it's just non-existent it can't cover a wet can't cover a baby with a wet towel and um, I don't know where that analogy came from. But I just I like the Steelers a lot more in this matchup. And if the Steelers win today, you know, and the Titans lose, then Steelers and your fans, you better start thinking for the playoffs because you've got a date with somebody waiting for you in January. But uh, I like the Steelers. Then it's the New York Giants and the Washington Redskins. Both teams come into this game at 3-11. And uh, the Giants are the three, are the third place team in the NFC East, and the Redskins are the fourth place team in the NFC East. When these two teams met, all the way back in week number four, the Giants ran rough shot all over them, and it was a murder at the hands of the New York Giants. I expect similar things, not just because I'm a Giants fan, 
I mean, the Giants, they play the Redskins very well in Maryland. And normally they don't play them so well in New York. It Really, that's what's got me thinking it's going to be the opposite this year. But we just we have owned Landover, Maryland for a long time. And you'd have to go back to, like, Joe Theismann to find a time when we just weren't showing up in Maryland. So I like the Giants in this game. And uh, Daniel Jones is coming back. So we, we get to see the first Daniel Jones, Dwayne Haskins. Uh, starting matchup I know they went and uh, both of them were technically in the game at the same time uh, in their other meeting this year but this will be the first time both those two quarterbacks start so I'm excited to see how Daniel Jones bounces back from the injury if he does play and I expect a Giants victory then we have the Panthers at the Colts so the Panthers have been one of the most wishy-wash teams of any of them in the league they look like Early in the year, they were going to ride Christian McCaffrey all the way to a wild card spot. And now they're switching to Will Greer because Kyle Allen can't get it done. So <laughs> there you have it. I mean, I don't know what else to say, frankly, about these squads. The fact that you've had to bounce between the two quarterbacks now. And, I, I mean, Cam Newton is Cam Newton. I don't think he's particularly special. I don't really honestly think he's in the top 20 in terms of quarterbacks currently throwing the football in the NFL, even if he was healthy. And obviously we don't know how he would have performed this year because he went out so early, but Will Greer, I don't have a lot of faith in Will Greer. I know they picked him for a reason, but he's just not, he's not anything I thought was special in college, and he's not anything I think is special against NFL defenses but obviously we'll see and they have a particularly easy matchup against the Indianapolis Colts who just like the Panthers started off white hot and then they just absolutely died and I don't know what exactly happened to Indianapolis I think they lost to Miami and then that was pretty much that was pretty much the nail in the coffin for their season and now they're here they're on the outside looking in They've got two teams ahead of them in the playoff race in the NFC, AFC South, and it's pretty much over for them. So I like uh, <clears throat> I like Indianapolis in this game. Don't <clears throat> don't really have any vested interest in it, and it's not really going to shake the league up. You know, I think these two teams are probably just going to end up getting, you know, pretty good early first round picks, maybe eight, nine, ten, eleven, somewhere in there. So I got the. Uh, I've got the Colts nonetheless then the Ravens at the Browns so one of the Ravens worst losses on their resume is a loss to the Cleveland Browns not only did they lose to Cleveland Cleveland demolished them it was a badgering I, I really wish I had the the number right in front of me but yeah I mean one of the worst losses for this team yeah it was 40 to 25 the Browns put up 40 points against the Ravens. That's insane. And I know the Ravens are a much different looking football team than they were all the way back in September. But still, you always got to have that looming in the back of your mind. I mean, division rivals play their division teams so much harder. With that said, though, I just think Baltimore is too much. They are too much for any team to handle especially Cleveland Cleveland's just got a lot of a lot of problems they're the only team of the 32 in the league to not have a winning season this decade that's that's very sad and uh, Cleveland's got a lot to figure out you know they got to figure out if they want to trade Odell Beckham if they want to trade Jarvis Landry what they want to do I mean they've just got a whole lot of nonsense going on and they're bad Let's face it, I know I'm eating crow from the beginning of the season when I said they were going to make the playoffs and they were going to possibly appear in the AFC Championship. But when you look at them from a pure talent level, I mean, just tell me where I was wrong. From a pure talent level, this, this team should have gone to the playoffs. And they proved me wrong because Browns got a Brown, but I like the Ravens on Sunday. They're just going to roll. They're, it's probably going to be a flip reversal of the score. Ravens are probably going to put up 40. Browns might not even crack 18. 
So then the Jaguars take on the Falcons. Falcons coming off a huge win on Sunday against San Francisco. The Jaguars, I mean, I don't know what to say about them. I know they, they got, they're the last team ever to win a football game in the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum. So there's that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they beat the Raiders. The Raiders aren't much of anything in this league right now. So I'm going to take the Falcons. I just think they're a lot better, especially playing at Mercedes-Benz Stadium there in Georgia. Then the Saints will take on the Falcons. Oh, excuse me. The Saints will take on the Titans. I misread. And the Titans need this. They need this upset in a bad, bad way. And conversely, the San Francisco 49ers need this to shake their way. Because if... if you know, New Orleans can lose, and Seattle can lose to New Orleans, then all of a sudden, or if Seattle can lose to San Francisco, and the Saints can drop another game, and Green Bay kind of stays m right there in the mix, all of a sudden we have a shakeup at the top, you know what I mean? So, all these games are very crucial, and for the Saints, I mean, they know this. They know they need to win to stay in the number one seed. I think they're the number one seed. No, they're the number three seed. But either way, they need a win to potentially get to that plateau. And, I mean, the Titans, I like them, but they had it really handed to them on Sunday by, uh, by Houston. That final score does not reflect how that game went at all. I mean, Houston just Houston beat them up. It, it, was, a, it was a pretty slow start to that game between Houston and Tennessee last week but once it got going I mean Houston just got going and Kenny Stills had two touchdown grabs in a quarter you know so I don't know I just I, I like Seattle a lot more or excuse me I like uh, New Orleans a lot more in this game I just don't trust the Titans to show up next 405 the Raiders will visit the Chargers and not much to say other than my pick. And that will be the Chargers. Then the Lions are going to take on the Broncos. Again, not much to say between these two teams. The Lions just had an issue, a formal, a formal statement about uh, how they're going to attack the offseason and they're going to evaluate every position. You know, it's just, it's a sad, sad reality. <clears throat> Excuse me, when you're a Detroit Lions fan. Because you're just in this perpetual world of suck for forever, forever, the Lions have, have sucked. And they need a win against the Broncos just to carry something over into next year. So, even with that said, I'm going to take the I'm gonna take the Broncos. I like Drew Locke. He's shown me a lot in his first few starts. Uh, excuse me. And, and I know he didn't look great in the snow against Kansas City but honestly who would other than Patrick Mahomes who would look that good maybe Tom Brady from 10 years ago but I, I've got I've got uh, Denver then Arizona will take on Seattle and in all for all intents and purposes Seattle should win this game there should be no reason you know that they they walk out of Seattle with a loss to the cards and it would, it would be pretty devastating if the Cardinals were to beat the Seahawks and shake everything up. Because then, right on cue, San Francisco sneaks back into the one seed. But I don't foresee that happening, and I, I like Seattle's chances in this game, so they're my pick. Then the Cowboys will take on the Eagles. And this game is for the division lead. And this game is in Philadelphia, but I don't particularly like either of them in this matchup. I don't, I don't, the Cowboys, they showed up for the first time this season. They got their first win against a team with a winning record against LA. And I know I didn't mention LA's blunder against Dallas last week when I was talking about them versus San Francisco. Because really, I think it's just an anomaly. Uh, you play in Jerry World against the Cowboys, and that's just kind of what happens. You know, 
And I, I, I don't mean that that's like kind of what happens to everybody, but I just mean is yeah, you can kind of tell just from the beat in that game how it was going to go down. I mean, the Rams got the win in the playoff game earlier in the year in January, and it was just retribution for the Cowboys. There was a lot riding on that game. It was an emotional game for them, and they got a they got a necessary win. But on the other hand, Philadelphia coming off two nail biters in a row, an overtime game with the Giants in a game that they easily could have lost against the uh, Washington Redskins. So they don't look necessarily on the greatest footing. And Carson Wentz, I think, is probably bottom five quarterback in the league. He just doesn't look good at times, like, at all. Like, there are times when he'll stand firm, flat-footed in the pocket, and he'll just he'll just throw guys, f like, throw five yards above the head of guys. It's just, it's not what you have to, that's not what you can do as a starting quarterback in this in this league. So, I like Dallas in this game. It, it pains me to say it, and it quite frankly disgusts me to say it, but uh, they are my pick. Then Kansas City will take on Chicago on Sunday Night Football in the Windy City. And the Chiefs should have no problem in this game. They are my pick. Then the final Monday Night Football game of the year will be the Packers and the Vikings. And the Vikes, they're not out of it yet. They still have a chance to jump up a little bit in this in this here playoff. You know what I mean? Uh, it ain't over till the fat lady sings so I don't know really what to expect in this game because the Green Bay Packers just tend to they tend to crumble when it comes to these big moments you know and I can't really think of any examples off the top of my head like San Francisco that they just got bullied by San Francisco a game they should have won <clears throat> if we're being honest they should have won that game and and obviously they didn't and they looked pretty bad in, in losing so they need a big time win against Minnesota and Minnesota they've been up and down too so story of the NFL this year good teams look really bad at times and bad teams have looked really good at times but uh, I'm going to take Green Bay in this game for pretty obvious reasons I just think they're more talented and obviously I'm probably going to be uh, be disproven on Sunday night or on Monday night excuse me because that's just what happens to me. I always get uh, get proven wrong. But the Packers are my pick. So, there you have it. Week 16 in the books. Next week is the final week of the regular season, ladies and gentlemen. Please do me a favor. Enjoy football on Saturday, on Sunday, and on Monday. Stay safe. Happy holidays. And, uh... I will be back talking to you guys after the big Christmas. After the big Christmas, I will be back with uh, Week 17 predictions. So enjoy the holiday. Enjoy your friends. Enjoy your family. Enjoy your gifts. Don't get too wrapped up in it all. Just enjoy life and enjoy the things that matter most to you, which for me is football. And I will see you guys next week.